Hello everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Okay, so this Sunday I'm going to talk about somebody that we haven't talked about in a long time. And the person I am going to bring up is the prophet Isaiah. Now, do you remember what a prophet is? So a prophet is somebody that has been kind of gifted and is able to kind of hear God's messages a little bit more clearly than some other people. And basically what a prophet would do is once they understood kind of what they think God wanted, their job was then to tell other people, hey, I think this is what God wants from us. Now, Isaiah lived for a long time and he made lots of kind of prophecies or prophets or uh, proclamations basically but one in particular is the one we're focusing on in this story so at this point in time all of God's people were fighting nobody could get along this group didn't like th that group this group didn't like that group those two groups didn't like that group it was just a hot mess nobody could get along and people had been fighting for a long long time now, when people fight, things tend to get a little bit messy, right? People don't focus on the things that are truly important, like family and love and friendship. They tend to only focus on kind of winning the argument, so to speak. So people were getting exhausted of all this fighting. And they were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Are we going to fight forever? Ten years down the road, will we still be fighting? Will my kids still be fighting? Will my great-grandkids be fighting? What is going to happen? So, Isaiah receives a message that somebody important is going to come. That a little child is going to lead them to peace. Now, I bet you can figure out what child he's talking about. He's pretty important, and we celebrate both... Um, him in Easter and in Christmas time. Yeah, so he's talking about Jesus here. And he brings up all of these different animal pairs as kind of an example of how um, strong this person's ability to bring peace will be. And some of those examples I kind of split right here so we can kind of guess. So first, the group he brings up is the wolf. And what do wolves typically not get along with? lambs that right so he said that wolves and lambs will be able to get along in this new world in this peaceful place that this little child is bringing and the next animal he brings up is a leopard now do you guys know what a leopard is yeah so a leopard is like a big cat and it's got lots of spots and it typically lives in the jungle and it's very sneaky it's a good hunter so he said that the leopard and the young goat which are also called kids, will be able to get along and that the leopard won't be tempted to eat the goat. Now the next one he brings up is a lion. Now lions are kings of the jungle, right? They're big, they've got big teeth, they've got big hair, big paws, big claws, just big all over. And what do cats like to eat? Cats typically like to eat other animals. But he says that in this peaceful world, the lion will not eat the calf. They will be able to stay in the same area, and he won't even be tempted to try to eat a calf. And a calf is just kind of like a, basically a cow, a baby cow. And the next animal he brings up is a bear. Now, do you guys ever know, you know what type of bear he's probably talking about? Well, he's talking about a big, big, big bear, something that's so ferocious and eats so much food. So he says that in this new kind of peaceful world that this little child shall bring, that the bear and the cow will be able to graze together. So bears are omnivores. They eat both meat and they also eat things like uh, fruits, berries, leaves, they're an omnivore, just like people are. But he says that bears and cows will be able to eat in the same area without feeling like there's competition. They'll be able to survive just fine. Now, the reason he brought all of these animal pairs up is because these are animal pairs that are, were really important back then as people knowing those did not get along. Wolves chase the lambs. Leopards eat the goats, lions eat the calves, that's just how life is. So when people saw that all of these different types of animals were able to get together and be perfectly fine and nothing 
not fight or um be eaten or anything like that it gave them hope because they thought well if all of these different animals can get along that probably means that one day we'll all be able to get along too now the other important part of this story is the fact that when this little child will lead them to peace he'll kind of point all people to destruction and it is as they will not hurt or destroy my holy mountain so he says that once everybody kind of starts to follow this path it'll be their job to protect the holy mountain now i don't think he's just talking about one mountain in particular i think he's talking about the world in general and how it's humanity's job to take care of kind of the earth and the animals on it that's one of the first jobs God ever gave us and I think with all of this war he kind of realized people had forgotten what they were here to do which was to protect the earth and protect the animals so there are two important things in Isaiah's story that he kind of told all of these people one that it shall be a little child that will lead them and two that they will not hurt or destroy my holy mountain so this week, I have two things that I want you to do. One, I want you to answer that first question on that family take-home sheet. I think that first question is something along the lines of, if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? And if you'd like, I would love if you would draw a picture and then send it to my email, camille.breckenridge at colonialucc.org, so I can see what your answers are. And that was the first thing. And the second thing I want you to do is find something that you can do personally that can make the earth a little bit greener. Now, that might mean um, you go out into the yard and you help bring up all of the sticks in the leaf leader and start a compost pile. It might mean that instead of throwing your glass jars away, you take it to the glass recycling. It might even mean that um, you do a little bit job of maybe not using a water bottle, a plastic one, and instead use a reusable water bottle. But there are lots of little things that we can do to make the world a little bit of a better place. Alrighty. Well, that's all I have to say today, everybody. I'm really excited to see you, and I hope that soon we will all be together again, okay? Bye-bye, everyone. I'll see you next Sunday.